Hello everyone, it's Cliff, back with another video, trying to keep on a uh, somewhat updated schedule. And I apologize in advance for the quality of the lighting. Uh, it's nighttime in my apartment and I don't have the best, you know, lighting situation or the best setup. That's why you just see a computer against a wall. But anyway, uh, getting on to the title of the video, uh, as you can tell, this is an IBM Intel Station Z Pro model type 9228. This was the last, uh, I guess, consumer prosumer model that IBM ever built themselves uh, before they obviously sold their PC division off to Lenovo. I still have this machine in service and we are going to be upgrading it today. Currently, it is running two uh, quad core Xeons at 2.33 gigahertz. I believe they are Xeon uh, E350. Four five or E five three four fives, whatever number that is. Um, they're clocked obviously at two point three three gigahertz. They're a little bit lower voltage. I put them in there in the uh, the summertime because it gets really hot. The system gets really hot, especially because it's using fully buffered DDR two dims. There is thirty two gigs of uh, FB. Uh, DDR2 in here uh, and, and they get really hot they get about 80 degrees 85 degrees Celsius each and there is a um, Samsung SSD which I'm using the boot off the SATA ports on the motherboard uh, this machine does run Windows 10 uh, it runs Windows 10 if you upgrade the CPUs to the quad core variants which are technically not supported I believe um, I forget the code name for the exact Xeons that are there originally, but the Xeon 5160, which are dual core uh, CPUs, they lack the support uh, to run Windows 10 64 bit now. Uh, Intel, uh, not Intel. Microsoft added some additional um, requirements to the 64 bit version of Windows, and the default CPUs no longer run it. So, what I'm going to be doing is replacing a few of the components in the system. Start out, we have, I don't know how well you can tell these, these uh, heat spiders take some beating. These are Xeon X35, X, uh, 5355s. These are 2.66 gigahertz. So I'll get a little bit of a speed bump. And it, when we're dealing with this uh, architecture, any uh, bump and clock is <laughs> much appreciated. How much an IPC to go around here. This is a Quadro M4000, I believe. Let me just jump over to M5000. Uh, yep, M4000. So this is a Maxwell based Quadro. I believe it is the same chip as a GTX 970. Uh, just obviously clocked lower so it could fit in a single slot. Uh, the reason why I want to use this is I want to have access to both of the PC or all three of the PCIe slots on the machine. So on the machine, there are three by 16 slots. I believe one is running at by eight, one's running at by 16, and then there is a by four slot. Uh, PCIe Gen 1, too. Uh, so uh, there's definitely not a lot of bandwidth in there. Hence why I'm also using this USB card uh, that has a PCIe Gen, uh, this is a PCIe 3 Gen 4, uh, not Gen 4, a by 4 bus. Uh, I'm going to be swapping out what I have currently in there, which is a combo card, a uh, combo USB 3 and SATA card, but I can't use the SATA to boot off. And even if I could, if it's running at a by 1 PCI Express lane uh, in Generation 1, uh, the bandwidth, it just makes sense. It makes more sense for me to just use the onboard SATA 2, which I've been using. I'm also going to have a, a USB card with a USB header for a new wireless card with uh, Bluetooth support. I currently have a USB Bluetooth toggle in there. It doesn't really work well. And I have PCI Wi-Fi. Uh, the graphics card I'm running in there temporarily is my GTX 1060 test card. Uh, it's been annoying. I have to take it in and out. So this is going to finally replace it for good uh, for the life of the system, which is I'm going to run it until I can't really run Windows 10 anymore on it. And then maybe switch it to Linux. But let's open up the system and take a look. So here are the internals of the system. This is this uh, interesting latching power supply thing. <laughs> uh, definitely uh, built off an old server, I believe, or this is basically a repurposed server that they turned into their workstation brand. But uh, we have our two uh, ATA drives, <laughs> DVD drives. Then we have our um, SSD and an adapter caddy here. We have also... Um, I believe this, these are uh, these are actually SAS three gigabit um, drives. I believe there's two 300 gig drives and then a 750 gig uh, SATA drive hooked up to um, a SAS controller that's kind of hidden underneath this whole fan bezel thing. There's our 32 gigs of fully buffered DDR2 RAM. Our two CPUs are uh, my GTX 1060 test gig card. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. There is a uh, my uh, what's it called the USB 3 and SATA combo card that I'm going to be replacing with the USB 3 card. Uh, under this, we'll then free the one PCIe slot for or the by 4 slot to then run the Wi-Fi card as well. So I'll have USB 3, Wi-Fi, GPU. This is a, 
an old SCSI card. So this is a um, quad port uh, PCI X Ethernet card, and there is my old PCI Wi Fi card. So the system is pretty well designed. Uh, got a nice layout. Uh, makes a lot of noise when you turn it on. Uh, I'll probably show that later in the video. Just side port of the machine, just to get an idea of what's plugged in. There's my USB Bluetooth dongle. Not a lot of USB ports on this machine either. You get four in the back, two in the front. Gigabit Ethernet, basic audio. I'm able to get the audio driver working on the Windows 10. Uh, check out ibmfiles.com if you need the driver for that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take out all the cards, uh, replace them, and replace the CPUs. Got the system a little bit more taken apart. We got our two CPUs. Uh, I cleaned them off. I removed the old ones. Going to work on installing the new ones now. You can see all that uh, DDR2 fully buffered memory. Uh, this stuff gets really hot. Uh, they're still hot. The system's been off for about an hour, and they're still a little hot to the touch. Uh, those caps right there on all the other machines I've seen, those, those have all gone bad. Uh, luckily, those have not gone bad yet. Knock on wood. Got our cards removed. We're going to go ahead and install the GPU in the top slot, Wi-Fi card in the bottom slot, and the uh, USB card in the, in the third slot. I believe the markings next to it mean they run at either four or one lanes, four or one lanes, and obviously the 75 watts are seven, how much power it can do. Uh, there's the two remaining cards we're going to keep in, just the SCSI card and the uh, Ethernet card. One thing I want to test, though, is I unplugged, actually, you can see here is the SAS controller. I unplugged the SATA 4 connection from the SAS controller and plugged it into the SAS ports on the motherboard. I want to see if I could just use that bay for the um, SSD, and then I could move uh, a USB 3 front, um, a USB 3.5 inch bay here in order to have uh, front USB. So I want to give that a try. But uh, let me go ahead and put the CPUs in and then reassemble the system. Got all our components installed, our GPU, our new GPU, our new Wi-Fi card, our new USB card, and our new other USB card. I've still got to find a screw for this one. A little loose right now. Uh, things I did and didn't end up doing was replacing the uh, this little 3D and half inch bay with a USB front port uh, header, or a little, I guess a little caddy kind of sled thing, uh, because I don't have the bracket for it. So I'll need to, one, track down a bracket for it, and so I left the SSD there in the meantime, and that's about it. Uh, there's not much left I could upgrade on this machine, so this might be the final configuration and for, I guess, for the foreseeable future. Uh, I might just swap out the... I was going to use another cable for the power lead. I might just want to get a different one. Uh, this is supposed to be for another project, but uh, it's good enough for right now. So let's go ahead and turn this wind turbine on. To all the headphone listeners, this is going to be an audible warning because this is how loud the system gets when you turn it on, from, like from a from a cold boot with um, no power. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and boot into the BIOS. Here's also the thing you don't see anymore. Good old RAM test. You can see we have our X3355s. Uh, oh, man. I really got to get better at speaking in general. Uh, RAM test. Our TCG, which is our TPM, is enabled. And uh, I'm just going to actually just let it boot up and uh, install all the drivers I need to. Uh, it takes a little time to count all 232 gigs of RAM. And um, that's really it for this video. Hopefully just a quick overview of the... Kind of a rare system. It's definitely one you don't see around very often, and I hope to keep this one running for as long as I can. Uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.